Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. We're talking about this fact, an encouraging fact, encouragement. For a discouraging world, you have God's wisdom. You have God's wisdom. And I was so excited to preach this message, and then I had a circumstance happen uh, just recently, and uh, I was asking God for his wisdom, and he said, I'm pretty sure you're preaching about wisdom, so I am, uh, this is for no one else uh, but for me. Uh, this evening. It's for all of us, but uh, I'm going to be listening in again and, and seeing what God has to say because I certainly, not only do we have God's wisdom, but I need God's wisdom this evening. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Over and over, Solomon says in the book of Proverbs, find wisdom, get wisdom. But we have to ask, how do we get wisdom? Or maybe even a more basic question, what is wisdom in general? What is wisdom? We'll start off by saying this. If wisdom were a man, you ever see those memes where it says, you know, if Monday were a person or, you know what I mean, or whatever it is, if, if this and such was a person, then it has a, a picture that like perfectly describes that thing. If wisdom were a person, it would be Jesus Christ. The Bible says, in fact, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We'll put our eyes on this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.30, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. Wisdom is Jesus. Jesus is wisdom. Just like we talked about this morning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is God's Word. Also, Jesus is wisdom. Wisdom come to life. We cannot be Jesus. The Bible says, get wisdom. That we ought to live our lives according to wisdom. But if Jesus is wisdom, we cannot be Jesus. So it almost leaves us in a conundrum there. We cannot be Jesus, but we can become like him. How is that possible? How can we become like Jesus? Someone tell me. Through sanctification, right? Sanctification. Let's look at that verse again. We'll see how this fits together perfectly. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and, right, and redemption. So we are able to become like Jesus. We are able to become like wisdom because of sanctification. If we do what Jesus would do in every situation, all the time, that's wisdom. If we were to do what Jesus would do in every situation, every single time, all the time, that is wisdom. Listen to the prayer that the Apostle Paul was, and uh, these men were praying for the church at Colossae. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom. Imagine that. Living a life that is completely filled with the knowledge of God's will and wisdom. A life guided by wisdom is a great life. And I'm just laying a few foundational truths before we get into the meat of this. We're going we're to put this all together. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 10. Turn there if you would. Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 10. A life guided by wisdom is a great life. I remember often... As a teenager, a young adult even, you would hear a message and boy, you know, if you just completely surrender to God and his will and you live a life that's completely controlled and guided by him, that's the greatest life. And, and nothing that you could ever do or imagine would be any better than the life that God has for you within his will. And I would roll my eyes and think, yeah, okay, that's just a pastor saying that because he has to because he draws his paycheck from the people sitting in the pew but as I get older and as I try to live my life more and more in God's will and try to seek him every day, the more I realize, you know what, they, they actually maybe were onto something. They actually knew what they were talking about. There is no better life. There is no, well, there's no better life than following God and his word and, and living according to wisdom. Notice this, Proverbs chapter 2, verse 10, When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. What a promise. Living a life completely guided by wisdom seems impossible, and it is in our own strength. 
but God will give us the ability to act and to think and to speak and ultimately to live like Jesus. He will give us wisdom. James 1.5, a verse that uh, we've talked about often. Many of you, I'm sure, quote and claim uh, daily. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. That's a verse that I've prayed and claimed many, many times since becoming pastor because I figured out that I didn't have a lot of things figured out and I needed God's wisdom. Solomon said to get wisdom. Proverbs 4, verse 7, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. So the question is this. We understand the importance of wisdom, but how do we get it? How do we get it? There are a few prerequisites, a few positions that we need to be in in order for us to receive wisdom. We're going to look at four in particular this evening. First of all, in order to receive wisdom, we have to have a humble spirit. We have to have a humble spirit. A humble spirit says, I need God. Turn to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is not talking about being afraid of God because if we don't do what he tells us to do, then he's going to reach down from heaven and, and drop the hammer on us or punish us because we didn't do what he asked us to do. The fear of the Lord is a reverent respect. It's putting God and viewing God for who he is and where he belongs in our life, and it's viewing me for who I am and where I belong in my life. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Job chapter 28, verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Wisdom is something that we don't have and cannot have in our, on our own. And it takes humility to admit that everything that we need for daily living is dependent on someone else. As people as a whole, uh, especially uh, oftentimes as men or as independent people, we like to think that we're independent. I was just, uh, the kids were watching that Christmas, uh, that Christmas, uh, the, um, the, the little elf who wants to be a dentist. Is it Herbie, right? I'm going to be a dentist. And then uh, the, the little uh, the Rudolph, of course. And, uh, and Herbie, he got kicked out of the shop because he didn't want to build toys. He wanted to be a dentist, right? And, uh, and Rudolph, of course, got kicked out because he had a red nose. And, and uh, they meet up, and they're both kind of running away from home at the same time. And, and Herbie says, well, that's okay because I'm independent. And Rudolph says, well, I'm that too. I'm independent. And Herbie says, I've got a good idea. Let's be independent together. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I chuckled as I was listening to that. We like to think of ourselves as independent. We don't want to be dependent on someone else. But a life of wisdom, a life of humility, is depending completely and totally on God. What did Jesus tell his disciples? Follow me. He didn't tell them where they were going. He didn't tell them what they were doing, but he gave them very clear instructions, right? Follow me. It's pretty straightforward. But they had to be willing to obey. And we have to get to a point where we are totally dependent on God. And we're okay with that. It takes humility. A truly humble person sees himself for who he is and sees God for who he is. This is the beginning of wisdom. Notice Solomon's attitude. We're going to turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7. This is so important. This is uh, the account where God comes to Solomon and he says, what do you want? Ask for it. You name it. It's yours. And the attitude that Solomon has is so important, so important. And I pray that this is, this is one of the things that was for me this evening, is the attitude that Solomon had, such a humble attitude. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7, In that night did God appear unto Solomon, and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and hast made me to reign in his stead. Solomon could have said, Well, I'm a king, so... Uh, it, it's, you know, it only stands to reason that God's coming to ask me something. No, he said, God, you're the one who put me in this position. It's because of you that I'm the king. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge 
that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this people that is so great? He didn't ask for wisdom so that he could be a shrewd businessman and gain wealth or that he could maybe learn some defensive tactics or some offensive tactics in, in battles to where he could overtake his enemies and conquer the world. He asked for wisdom because he wanted to be a good ruler over God's people. He said, who can rule this people? And God said unto Solomon, because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked for riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast thou asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings that have had that before thee, neither shall there be any after thee have the have after thee have the like. Solomon had such a humble heart attitude when he went to God and asked for wisdom. Are you, do you have a humble attitude? Do you have a humble heart attitude? Do you ask God for a humble spirit to where you say, I need God? If you aren't in that position where you have the fear of the Lord and you are in a position where you say, I need God, then you're going to have a difficulty receiving wisdom. Number two, we have to have a hungry soul. A hungry soul says, I desire God. Wisdom has to be sought in order to be found. Wisdom has to be asked for to receive it. A.W. Tozer said this, The great people of the Bible had an insatiable hunger for God. He wants to be wanted. Too bad that with many of us he waits so long, so very long in vain. In Psalm 119 alone, we are instructed to seek God with our whole heart six different times. Psalm 119, verse 2, keep his testimonies that seek him with the whole heart. Psalm 119, verse 10, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Verse 34, give me understanding and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Verse 58, I entreat thy favor with my whole heart. 69, I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Verse 145, I cried with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord, I will keep thy statutes. Let me ask you a question. These are some of the questions that aren't very fun to answer. If you had to rate your desire for God on a scale of 1 to 10, what would the number be? 1 being, I don't really want God at all. I endure church. I don't read the Bible. I rarely pray. I kind of roll my eyes at the thought of God in general, to be honest. And number 10 being, I need God. I want God. I can't get enough of the word. I can't get enough of the gathering of God's people. Where would you be? What is that number? Are you satisfied with that number? Are you where God wants you to be on that scale? How is your desire? Blessed are they to hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled I've heard people say before, well, pastor, he doesn't, he doesn't fill me. He doesn't feed me spiritually. You have to be willing to put the food in your mouth in order to get full, right? In order for it to get to your stomach. What's the old saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. If you want God, you want to be filled with the things of him and his word and his righteousness, there's an endless well, there's unlimited bread, but you have to be willing to eat it. You have to be willing to accept. How much do you desire God? Everyone wants wisdom. Oh, I'm jumping over myself. So first of all, how do we get wisdom? We have to have a humble spirit. Humble spirit says, I need God. We have to have a hungry soul that says, I desire God. Number three, we have to have a hearing heart that says, I will listen to God. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. In order to be wise, you must not just listen. You also have to hear in order to learn. You can't just listen. You have to hear. Everyone wants wisdom, but not everyone wants to be teachable. One of the greatest abilities is teachability. According to the Bible, if you are not teachable, you are a fool, which is the exact opposite of wise. Are you teachable? 
Are you willing for, to listen? And not just to listen, but to hear? I'll give a, a silly example. I've given it before. When I was in college working in the dining hall and cleaning, working on the, you know, the dishwashing line, that infamous dishwashing line, there was a time where one of the toilets was broken. And the, one of the ladies came out that ran the kitchen and she said, one of the dining hall toilets is broken. Is there anyone that would volunteer to fix it? My hand shot up. Anything to get me off the dishwashing line. Uh, I'll work with a toilet any day over the dishwasher. So I went in and I diagnosed the problem, but I uh, could not execute the solution. It was something that dad had showed uh, me many times. At home, he had shown me, now son, one day you're gonna be on your own, you're gonna have a house on your own, you're gonna need to figure out how to fix a toilet. And I just, I just wanna be out playing basketball. I was listening, I wasn't hearing. Then at school, he'd come in, all the teen boys in the bathroom, okay, this is odd. And uh, all right, boys, this, this toilet's broken, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. And he'd show us how to fix it, and we, you know, we're goofing off and not paying attention. We're listening, but not hearing. And dad would quiz us, and we wouldn't know and chuckle about it until it was just me and that dumb toilet. <laughs> and what did I do? I took out my flip phone, and I called dad. And I said, dad, this toilet, I know what the problem is. I can't remember how to fix it. And he said, oh, OK, so you're going to do this, that, and the other. At that moment, I was not only willing to listen, I was also willing to hear. I was in a much more teachable situation because now I had something and I had a desire to attain to wise counsel. We get that way in our lives though, don't we? Where we roll our eyes and you know, we read something in God's word or pastor says something and it's not that big a deal until we get into that situation where we think, okay, I just lost somebody. I just lost my job. Now all of a sudden the way I handled the situation that message the pastor preached three weeks ago, now all of a sudden that, uh, that seems way more important than it did then, right? Are you willing to hear God? Are you willing to hear pastor? Are you willing to hear wise counsels with an open heart and with an open mind? And we're going to bring it all together right here. Number four, we have to have a heeding mind which says, I will obey God. A humble spirit says, I need God. A hungry soul says, I desire God. A hearing heart says, I will listen to God. But a heeding mind says, I will obey God. Catch this. Don't miss this. We are not wise because we have God's word. Having a Bible under your arm does not make you wise. You're close, but you're not there. Having, you're not wise because you desire God's word. You're not even wise because you read God's word. You're only wise when you keep and obey God's word. You're only wise when you keep and obey God's word. So many people have the Bible. So many people want to read the Bible. So many people do read the Bible. But very few people obey the Bible and everything that it says. So few people, when they read, Thou shalt fill in the blank, or thou shalt not fill in the blank, they say, I don't like that. I'm not doing that. Okay, that I can do. It's not a big deal. I'm, that's not a huge temptation to me. I can, I can take that out of my life. And then when the Lord drops something else in their lap and they think, mm, I don't like that. I'm not getting rid of that. You're not wise. Because we are only wise when we obey God's word. Do you want God's wisdom? We all need God's wisdom, but not all of us are willing to be teachable. Not all of us are willing to say, God, I am totally humble. I am fearing you. God, I need you completely. Not all of us have the prerequisites that it takes to be wise. We want wisdom, but we don't want to have the right attitude, right? I pray that each one of us has the right attitude so that God can give us the wisdom like James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God.